Hello, Holdy Wiremod here. Welcome to tutorial 18 in the GLUA Pro series where we're going to be taking a look at creating a custom anim entity. Now, there are other entity types which we're going to discuss in the next upcoming tutorials. And of course, those are next spots, NPCs, the swaps, and all that. First, let's get into something basic. So here we have the GM player spawn, which is from the last tutorial, our method of creating an entity. So we're going to create an entity when the player spawns. It's going to be our custom entity type, which I'll get into in just a second. We're going to set the spawn of that entity to the player spawn point, plus 80 in the Y direction and minus 80 in the Y direction. So on the right and left of the player, we're going to be spawning a flaming globe. It's going to be very nice. All right, so let's get into the basics of that. So you go into your game modes folder, and this is where you actually place the entity file. And then you create an entities folder next to your game modes folder create another entities folder in there and then you have anim underscore custom which is going to be the actual name of the entity it's very important that this matches this name so the folder matches the ints uh, that create arguments name so we go into here and we have the basic file structure of init seal init and shared so let's open init.lua that's of course going to be your server side stuff shared will be your client and server and then seal init will be your client so let's start with the shared here you're going to want to put the details of the entity. This is actually necessary for the entity. You want to know what the entity is based on or which entity that this entity will derive as its base class. So here we have uh, base uh, underscore enum. So where do we get this? Well, let's go to my game mode text and you can see the base game mode, remember, is base. So we go back to here in the game modes. We go to base, go to entities entities just right here and you can see we have base underscore anim right here as well as brush filter point entity next box and ai and we'll go for all those in the future tutorials so let's first look at base anim now you'll notice the type here is going to be pretty much um anim right here so we're going to actually be copying and pasting all these because we can modify these values as well. These are default values for the entity that you're able to modify with anim. You also have render group and all this. So let's just bring all that into share.lua. So here we go, int type anim, and we can fill out these files here. So the name is going to be the name of the entity. So we'll have anim int. We're gonna have author, which here is holy wire mod or your name and contact is whatever email at service.com or if you have a website that works fine too purpose for a tutorial and we have instructions spawn me just whatever you want to put there anyway so now we have render group opaque which is that's just standard i'd keep that as such now for here we can also add some extra options you can say spawnable and then we'll say true. This is for your sandbox game mode if you want to create some entities for that. So admin spawnable. We can say false. And now that's going to be everything for shared. So let's just save that. And then let's get into the next one, which is going to be init.lua. So here we're going to be putting all those hooks that I mentioned in the last tutorial. So we have int hooks. We can have entity hooks, we can have int anim hooks. All these are related to the entity in which we're creating. Of course, we're going to use int anim. Right, let's use the use one from here. We can add uh, maybe a touch one. We can add initialize, of course, that's extremely important. All right, so let's do that. And uh, actually, we'll go over think as well, too. All right, so here we'll say we want the function initialize first. So we're going to have initialize just like this. There is no arguments for that. And we're going to start by setting the model. It's very important for every interactive entity to have a model. And if you're curious where to get the model paths from, well, you can either A, look them up on Google for the model list, or you can go into Gmod sandbox mode and open up your Q menu and then right click on any of these spawn icons and it'll have a copy to clipboard option and you can copy the model there as well. Here we have physics in it. So this is going to be the physics of the object. We're going to set it to a solid physics. You have different types that you can look up on the wiki as well that you can set there if you want to manipulate that data. You can set the move type here. Move type. 
So this is going to set it like a, a basic prop on sandbox, how that would move. You can also modify that as well. And you can set the collisions here with set solid. So we have solid and we're also going to have V physics just like this. Next thing we want to do after we set all the physics in the move type in the solid is we're going to want to wake the entity so you can actually move it. So the first thing you have to do is you have to get the physics object of the entity. To do that, you just assign the physics object to the variable phys. And we want to make sure that it's actually valid. So we'll say is valid. Then, and then we'll say wake. And this, again, will allow us to actually interact and move the object. Then we're going to have self ignite because I promised a flaming globe I'll ignite it for 10 seconds and anything that touches it will not ignite that's why this second argument is zero otherwise if you want to set a radius for in which it ignites things you would increase it beyond zero just like that okay so next I also promised the use hook so let's look at the use hook so int use and we'll end as such and then we'll say print activator. We'll say Nick. Nick is a function which is unique to the player class type. That's what activator is, by the way. So we have activator, which is going to be the first argument, and then the caller, which is going to be the second argument. So whoever's actually calling the hook. So activator loves, you guessed it, soup. All right. So that's something when we actually use the object. I did promise touch. So we'll say touch. And I do believe touch, if I'm not mistaken, because I'm doing most of this off of mem memory. But yes, we have an entity here, as you can see, and it's going to be called whenever it touched. So we'll just put int you know, whatever touched it. And let's just uh, kill whatever touches it. OK, then we're going to have lastly, I promised think. So think is going to be called every frame. There is not going to be an argument to it. Or, or every frame of the client, if it's called in the client. This is being called in the server, so it's going to be called every single tick of the server. I don't recommend you use think in correlation with something very inefficient with a loop, especially not a loop within a loop, God forbid. Or uh, especially if the table is very large that you're iterating through, if you're using a 4KV in pairs loop, don't do that. Very bad idea. You can actually crash the server if it's too intensive. And also... Uh, you don't want to be just running anything intensive in period inside of a think function because this is called every single tick. So you can cause extreme lag to your server if you use this irresponsibly. So I recommend only using optimized code within think. So I'm just going to leave that blank for now. But I did want to go over that for the sake of optimization purposes. Then we're going to close. And lastly, I'm going to have init.lua. So init.lua is, or seal init.lua is going to be very simple here. We're just going to have one function which is going to be int draw. Now we're going to go over more complicated examples in int draw in the upcoming tutorials, but for now we're just going to keep this simple and say draw the model. That's all you need to make the model look good. If you wanted to make the model invisible to where it just casts a shadow, you would just put return or nothing here and that works fine too. However, I actually want to see this. So that's good. We have this custom entity being spawned now on both sides of the player. So let's go and test that on the server. All right, so now we are in game and we have our flaming entities right here. So they went out after about 10 seconds. Let's use it. As you can see, it says I love soup. I'll touch it and I die immediately. And then we spawn some more flaming globes just like that. All right, so that's going to conclude everything for the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave some in the comment section below. As always, if you like the content, feel free to like, subscribe, and share. And also bell too, for whatever it's worth, if you like notifications of the video. And I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you guys for watching, and have a great day. Don't forget to check out Hexane Networks for affordable and high-performance server hosting. That's Hexane Networks, whose link is in the description below.